Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is on the request of a student. It is about series DC motor with diverter. And this is some question 3A from I don't know which book. It's not from Chapman's book. Okay, so first of all, let's see the series DC motor. This is the easiest connection to understand. We have the power supply, we have the field winding, and we have the armature. Now the field winding produces flux which induces voltage if it is a generator or it in induces back EMF if it is a motor. Now the physical connection would look something like this. This is the field winding and this is the armature. Now the actual connection or the equivalent circuit is something like this. We have the armature whose uh, induced voltage is EA or back EMF. RA is the armature resistance, RS is the field winding resistance, and LS is the field inductance. Normally, this is zero only RA and RS is written. And the current here, you can see this is the armature current which is same as the field current, which is also same as the line current. So these relations and the voltage or the terminal voltage can be written in terms of EA plus IA into these two resistances. Okay, now uh, in the book, uh, this statement is given that the flux is directly proportional to the armature current. I would prefer to write instead of armature current, field current, because the problem where we'll be solving, uh, the field current is different from armature current. Now in this case, it is same, the field current by S is same as the armature current, but there may be scenario where you are like using uh, uh, the different circuit, then we'll, we should use the field current. Okay, now we'll be using diverter, uh, a term used in the question. Now diverter is in parallel with the series field, we connect a resistor. So what happens that the current is now divided into two paths. The series field current reduces and therefore the flux also reduces and therefore the speed increases. Now the relation you can see that when flux decreases, speed will increase. Okay, now there are two types of induced voltage equations. First of all, the induced voltage or back EMF is given by this formula from here. You can calculate EA to be VT minus the drop here. So EA is VT minus this drop. And then there is another formula which uses K, Phi and N. That is the induced voltage in terms of speed. So we'll use both of these. We have another equation for the induced torque, which is K times phi IA. Now remember phi is the field flux. Field flux depends on the field current. And IA is the armature current. Now the K and K dash, they are constant. And this is their formula and it depends on this, but I will not uh, discuss this because we are not interested, we are not using these. Okay, now the question. A 500 volt series DC motor takes 90 ampere on full load and runs at a speed of 900 RPM. So 500 volt is the input, the current is 90 ampere and the speed is 900 RPM. Now we are converting this RPM into RPS, that is revolution per second, but dividing 900 by 60, we get 15. The armature resistance is 5 ohm, so this is 0 point, sorry, 0 0.5 ohm, and the series winding resistance is 160 milli. Now this is the first part, the second part of the question is determine speed when developing full load torque 
but a 0.1 diverter in parallel with the field. So the circuit will now look something like this, that we have connected a diverter of 0.1 ohm in parallel with the field. We have to now calculate speed. So we have two circuits and to just identify these two, we are naming the voltages back EMF here is EA1, current or the armature current is IA1 and the field current is IF1. And similarly in this case it is EA2, IA2 and IF2. Now as I mentioned that we have to determine the speed for the circuit in two. Now the technique that we'll follow is to use the EMF equation with the speed. So we have learned we can divide the two voltages, this one and this one. So it will be K phi K dash phi 2 N2 divided by K dash phi 1 N1. And to find N2, we know N1 is given here. This K, K dash will get cancelled. So all we need to do is our find EA2, EA1, EA2, and phi1 and phi2, then we can calculate N2. Okay, now EA1 we can find from the first equation easily. All the parameters are given this voltage, this current, and the resistances. So we'll just write the equation that we have learned. EA1 is Vt minus current into RARS, these two, plugging in the value of everything, 590. So we get EA1 to be 440.6 volt. So this is the first part. Now we need to find EA2 from the second circuit. So how much is EA2? We know the equation. This is the equation for this case. EA2 is V minus the drop here. So the first is I2 RA. And then this is in parallel. So we have to use the parallel resistance RP. And which can be calculated from here that RP is 160 milliohm. That is 0.16 multiplied by uh, uh, sorry, in parallel with 0 0.1 and solving RP is 0 0.615. So we have got RA and RP, but we don't know IA2. Here it was given 90. So we need to calculate IA2 first to get EA2. So how much is IA2? Okay, now. To find IA2, we have to use the uh, torque equation. Now, the torque induced is K phi I1. So for the first circuit, it will be K phi 1 IA1. For the second circuit, it will be K phi 2 IA2. Now, the, the question says that we have to find this or L2 in, at full load torque. The full load torque of the motor is the maximum torque that the motor can deliver when it is fully loaded. So actually this is fixed for a particular type of motor and depends on the horsepower of the motor. So we, since we are using the same motor here, therefore we can say that the torque induced 1 is equal to torque induced 2. That means phi 1 IA1 is equal to phi 2 IA2. Now, what is phi 1? We know that the flux is proportional to the field current. So phi 1 will be proportional to I field 1. And phi 2 here will be proportional to I field 2. Now, in this case, if you see, I field 1 is same as I A1, that is the armature current. So we can say that this is equal to the armature current. But here it is not. I field is the current in this branch. So first of all, we have to find this current with the help of CDR. And by CDR, IF2 will be the total current, which is IA2 divided by total resistance. 
multiplied by opposite arm. So this is opposite arm. So I F two will be zero point three eight five A one uh, uh, I A two. So we plug this value now here. So this is our phi two. And now we'll plug in or the right uh, replace phi one and phi two with these two values. So phi one is from here i a one and then we have i a one. Phi two is zero point three eight five a two from here, and we have another i a two. Following this, i a two is one forty five ampere. Okay, so now that we have found i a two from in this circuit, this i a two we have found, so we can now calculate e a two. Okay, RP, remember this was the value of RP, R A is 0 0.5, I A to 145, so plugging in the value, E A to is 338.3 volt. So now we have got both the E's, we'll put in this formula now, KK gets cancelled, we know the value of phi 2, phi 1 and N, so let's plug in all the values. From here, K cancels so this value, plugging in the value of EA2 and EA1, this value and this value. Then phi2 is 3.88 uh, IA2 into N2, and phi1 is IA into 15. Now IA we know is 90. I, I A1, sorry, and I A2, we have just calculated 145. So from this equation now, we can find N solving this part and this. And so N2 is 18.56 revolutions per second, which we can write in minutes also, multiply by 60, it will be 1114 revolutions per minute. So we have seen that the speed of the motor has increased from 900 RPM to 1114 RPM due to the diverter. So by using diverter of suitable values, we can control the speed or we can get the desired speed. I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.